everyone, Colleen here with Yarn Wars. Today we are working on the Scrub a Dun sponge. And this actually has a pattern available for both the full size, your dishcloth, or a sponge size. And I'm actually using my the sponge sponge that I've made that is showing in the pictures the green. I'm making another green, and this is one side of it. And I'm thinking I'm going to use yellow for the other side. So I may use this for the tutorial unless it's too light. Hopefully I will know that here pretty quick. So if you scroll a little bit down in the pattern, you'll see that there is the sponge instructions. And they're actually exactly the same as your regular size, only you're going to be chain chaining 21 instead of 31. So we're going to go ahead and start with our 21 chains and we are using, I'm sorry, we're using a G hook 4.25 and I want to show you real quick before we get started, I just want to show you what we're, what we're doing here and a couple of people have asked me and I've gotten confused on where to start their stitch in like chain one or I'm sorry, in um, row two, where it has you work your half double crochet into the first stitch, and I will show you what we're doing there. But you'll see these little stitches on the back side, and you want all of these to line up, all of the rows to line up. And the other thing you'll want is to make sure that your front post half double crochets are all lining up as well. Basically we're making these little squares and of course your tension is going to make a difference as to whether or not things are pulling and stuff. So just remember when you're working in one direction or another it might end up a little bit this way but both sides will be slanted in one direction and you just kind of pull it a little bit and get it to where it's straight. And so we're going to go ahead and start like I said, um, by chaining 21. And 21. Okay. Now, as the directions say, you want a single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So that's where we're going to start. Is we're going to work in, there's the first, into the second. Now I have a video to show you how to make a seamless foundation. And if you, for the sake of this video, because it's going to move a little faster, I'm going to go ahead and just regular single crochet down this row. But I do have a video that shows you how if you just single crochet into your foundation, the little spines on the back of your chains, you'll have a very nice start to your dishcloth projects, whatever dishcloth you're making. So, I'm going to start for, with this first one and I'm hoping that you're able to see everything okay. If I can keep it focused in, right? Otherwise I might have to change to the green. But we're going to start by going into our second chain from the hook and working a single crochet into that second and then every chain after to start this. And this is going to be the most painful part of your project is working your foundation chain because you got this very floppy row of chains that you're working into. So now at the end of this row, you're going to have on the sponge, you're going to have 20 stitches. <clears throat> and you're going to be working 20 stitches for all of your following rows. On the chain 31 for the full size, the dishcloth, 
you will work um, after your initial 31 chain, you're going to work 30 stitch rows to the end. Okay, we've got one more into our last chain. <clears throat> okay, now for our second row, we're going to chain two. and turn our work, turn it towards you. Now we are going to, we're going to work a half double crochet into this first stitch, <clears throat> excuse me, into this first stitch here. Just work a half double crochet and we're going to chain one. We're going to skip our next half double and we're going to work another half double crochet and then chain one. Skip and work a half double crochet and chain one. You're gonna work this all the way down. We're gonna skip, work our next half double crochet and chain one. And that's going to be your pattern for row two. Let me get enough yarn out here. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to and work down the rest of this row. We're just doing the same thing. Skipping one, half double crochet, and then a chain one. Skip, half double, and chain one. Okay, now we've got our last one, our last two here. <clears throat> we skip and we're going to work we actually have three, I'm sorry. We skipped that last one, we've chained, skipped, and worked a half double crochet into here, and then we'll just work a half double crochet without chaining into our last stitch. Okay, so we've ended this row with two half double crochets at the end without a chain. And this is what your row should look like after round two, or row two. And we are going to chain two, moving on to row three. We have our last, our two, and this is where I think it's getting mixed up. I will show you in our next set of rows, but we are going to work a front post half double crochet around this second one in, this half double crochet. So you're going to go in and through. I kind of have to turn mine to the side a little bit and just work your front post half double crochet. Okay, and then we're going to work one, we're going to work a half double crochet around this very next chain, which is almost behind that front post half double crochet you just made. And then we're going to work again a front post half double crochet. And then right into the chain. Immediately following, we're going to work a half double crochet. So you're going to continue this down, front post half double crochet, and then a half double crochet into the chain following. 
And you see, it's the front post half double crochet almost covers up that chain space. So you know it's going to be right behind that. Work a half double crochet. And then a front post half double crochet. All the way down the line. And we got some more yarn here. So I'm just going to work this down. If you need to pause this, go ahead and pause. I'm going to work this up quick here so I can go on. I'm sorry, that's my boiler. Oops. Okay, this is our last chain we're coming into here. We've worked our front post half double crochet. We've got our two half double crochets on the end here. Front post half double crochet, here's our chain. So we wanna work our half double crochet into that chain. And then we're gonna work a, half, a front post half double crochet around this stitch here, this next from the previous row. And then we're gonna work a half double crochet into our second chain up that we the chain two on the end okay so we've got our last two are right together there and this is what you end up with at the end of row three now as I had mentioned before we got started here you want to make sure that things are lining up you've got your I'm sorry, you've got your front post, your, um, maybe this is a little easier to look at, you've got all your front post half double crochets lean, or lining up here, and all of the little stitches you'll see on the back lining up as well, down the rows. Now, this I'm considering to be my first stitch worked. So that is why I have in here, you're going to have double crochet into that first stitch. But if you see, let me grab a stitch marker and it might be easier for you to use a stitch marker when you're doing this so that you can kind of keep track of where you're at. You want to make sure you have 20 stitches at the end of each row. And you see this stitch right here, I'm going to chain two first. And this I'm going to do because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to make this easier on myself and it might be easier for you but just chain two and I'm going to put because we're going to be working that chain two we're going to be working a stitch into that at the end of each row so I'm going to go ahead for this row while we're trying to work this out I'm going to put a stitch marker right up into that top of the chain space I know where I'm working this but I'm just saying if you're having troubles with this this might be a good thing for you to start out doing so that where my stitch marker is there that is where my my stitch is going to go into when I come back down this way on my next row so I've chained two this stitch right here and I'm gonna put a little marker in there so you can see this <coughs> And I'm not trying to complicate this. It's not going to be complicated at all once you understand what I'm doing here. Here's my little blunt needle. I'm just going to work in. This is the last, um, this is the half double crochet I worked before the one I put in my chain. Okay. And I've chained two up on top of that last half double crochet. So this is actually going to be the first stitch I'm working on the other side. I'm of chain two and now I'm going to turn and I want you to see where this needle is coming out of because it is confusing as it is in the pattern. I say you're going to work a half double crochet into your first stitch. If I can get this out of the way, you might consider that to be your first stitch, but it is not. 
you do not want to work into this you're working in on top of that last um, or that front last front post half double crochet into this one so for our next row we're going to repeat row two let me see if I can scoot that back there we're going to be repeat row two but when we're working into our first we're going to work a half double crochet into that stitch right there not the actual stitch coming up from the chain but this stitch that's coming up from our front post half double crochet that way everything's lining up you're working enough stitches into each row you need 20 stitches in this row so we've got one stitch let me grab some more yarn and we'll just count down real quick down the row we have our one stitch and we'll count that as one and then we'll chain one so that's our second stitch we're gonna skip our next one and we're gonna half double crochet into this one so that is three so we've got one two three we're gonna chain one so that's our fourth stitch so I'm just gonna count as I do this down just follow along and you're repeating row two so we've got one two three wait one two three four skip one go into that next with a half double crochet there's five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, okay and then we're down to our end 19 and 20 we want to work the two half double crochets right into the end there we're going to after our last chain and our um, after our very last chain that we're doing we're skipping this one and we're working a half double crochet into this stitch and a half double crochet to the top of our chain two from the beginning so there's 19 and then we'll work that into the top of that second chain up and that's 20. okay so now you have a total of 20 across okay so now we are going back we've just repeated our round two or a row two we've come to the end we have a total of 20 stitches and we are going to chain two now we're going to come back down to this stitch marker so you're going to understand more what we're doing and if this was ever confusing before if you had tried this without the video um, hopefully this will clear that up but we're going to turn our work towards us and again we are going to repeat row three now we're going to start by doing a front post half double crochet into that stitch right there okay so we'll front post half double crochet into there and if you want to um, you can just work with this video or you can pause if you need to um, you could just run down this row real quick I'm just repeating row three right now so we're doing our front post half double crochet around the half double crochet from the previous row and then we're half double crochet into that chain one the next following chain one so we're just going to work that straight down the row i'm not as quick with my front post half double crochet so <laughs> this might take me a little longer than it takes you so you could probably just work it right down the line here hang on just a moment i am just running out of yarn right and left here or I'm getting stopped here with my yarn. So I can focus back. 
And just remember, you know, if you if you feel like you're getting off track somewhere, do a stitch count. The nice thing, especially when you're working the sponge, are the rows are not, you know, there's not a lot to them. So nobody likes to rip a row. Rip a row. There we go. Nobody likes to do that, but if you have to, it's not like you're, you know, ripping out a lot. So if you must frog, you must frog. Okay. Or what is it? I've seen people say rip it. Rip it. All right. So we're coming to the end of our row. And as you can see, we have two stitches left. We have our front post half double crochet to make. Oops. Without bringing our stitch marker in on that. And then we're going to work our last stitch into the top of that chain too that we created in the beginning of that last row. So we'll go ahead and pull this out and work our half post double crochet into our last stitch. So now we're ending our row with our two, our front post half double crochet and our half double crochet into our chain. So this is how you're going to work this. And if you need to use a stitch marker for this, absolutely use one. Um, I know that it was getting a little confusing for some people, um, but there is, like I said, you know, you're going to find in, when, especially like when you're working, your a half double crochet and then chain one half double crochet chain one if you tightly stitch if you're a if you're a um crocheter like me um a lot of my like amigurumis the stuffed animals and stuff i just tend to stitch a lot tighter and that kind of makes everything pull you know you've got this first foundation chain and that alone is kind of a di it's a different consistency all of this pulls a little tighter together as it is which makes you know which makes us such a great scrubber um and that's why you know if you decide you want to go down to an f hook on that that is um even better in my opinion i made a couple of them with f hooks and it's even tighter but you'll notice sometimes in your work that you know you're working a row and all of a sudden your row is leaning tower going this way a little bit but usually you'll see that it's also leaning on that side this way as well so you know just kind of pull it out a little bit it is um, almost an elastic -y effect when you do that but um, you just need to remember that first stitch from here on out you are just chaining two at the beginning of each row and you're just repeating rows two and three. You just need to remember that when you get to row two, see now, or I'm sorry, now we are um, turning our work and we're going back in. But when you're working, you want to make sure, even if you have to use a little um, stitch marker at the end, you know, with your chain two, if you need to use a stitch marker just to know you're going into the right place, just make sure that the first, for your row twos that you're repeating, that your first half double crochet that you make is going on top of that front post half double crochet. So even if you need to just kind of give yourself a quick start to make sure you don't go into the wrong one because it will change a little bit of the dynamic of your project not so much but it's what it's going to do is it's going to cause you to add an extra stitch is what it's going to do because you're going to end up with an extra stitch at the end so what appears to be our first stitch that's actually going to be right here and when we start our row two over again in repeat mode we're going right into that stitch and like i said see look perfect example you know I I envy the crocheters that are really nice and loose and you know and good with their stitching I am not that good but you start this row always in that right stitch and your project will turn out perfect 
use a stitch marker wherever you need to and at the end if it leans a little bit in it's all gonna work out it's all gonna come out when you do your next chain two everything's gonna start evening out so um, I hope that this has been helpful to you I'm going to get to the end of this and then I am going to come back in real quick just to show you a quick finish off this particular one I am working for an actual sponge another sponge I love my sponge you guys are gonna love this too if you make one of those sponges um, one of the ladies in the forum had said she had made one and she posted a picture and she made the sponge and she said she saved herself she wanted to save herself a little time so she made it longer and then she just folded it in half and slip stitched it together how smart is that and um, for the sake of this tutorial I am doing it this way but I think I will be making one as well and I'm going to try that same thing because wow what a time saver that would be so if you just make sure that you're going into each of your um, end chains make sure you're doing that on each one you're gonna end up just fine at the end but see as you can see mine is maybe going a little bit over that way but it's also coming a little bit over this way too so at the end of the day when it's all where it's supposed to be it's gonna be just fine and then when I'm finished with these I'm gonna stitch back and front together or back and back together and make myself a new sponge with two different colors how about that so um, I hope like I said I hope this has helped you if you have any questions at all please 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 feel free to contact me you can come over to our group page at facebook.com slash groups slash yarn wars and um, I, I'm in there all the time so you can come in there and you know post if you have a question about the pattern um, anything if you want to just come in and hang out with us join in on one of the many discussions conversations pick up a free pattern if you want to share a free pattern with a community that you've made um, you can feel free to do that there but please do contact me even if you want to private message me you are welcome to do that um, you can also visit us at yarnwars.com and um, there you will be able to uh, be the first to know when a new pattern comes out a lot of great stuff around the corner I would love for you to subscribe so I'm inviting for you, I'm inviting you to do that now if you'd like just push subscribe and um, I will also be putting up more new cool free videos for you hopefully um, on a much more regular basis so thank you so much for joining us and I actually will be back in just a moment to show you at the end of this I'm going to do a quick stitch around I'm just going to show you my finished project all right so we'll see you soon okay so I have gotten to the end and what I did um, this is not in the pattern you can finish this off however you like but just to kind of match my oh way out of focus there just to match my um, uh, end with the other I went ahead and I ran a row of single crochets so um, I have single crochets on the bottom single crochets on the top this is gonna make this a little easier to knit together but um, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our two pieces and I did it in two different colors so that we could um, just kind of see the difference on this um, you're gonna want the wrong sides um, I would just say match up your foundations match up your foundation chains which I have here on the bottom and we're going to match our wrong side to our wrong side and stitch those together okay and so you can make your choice this is gonna look a little tacky probably <laughs> because I already have my yellow tail so I'm going to use my yellow tail to do this and I probably should be starting around you know what I actually I'm thinking I might just go ahead and chain one and work a quick row of single crochets across another quick row because that would kind of actually even it out a little more with the two 
It looks like that's what I might have done with my green there. Um, so if you want to work a couple of rows of single crochets at the end of your project, you can do that. Or not, you don't even have to do this because we end with our row of, um, we're going to work it up and end with our third repeat row. So you'll end with your row of front post half double crochets and half double crochets into the chain. So that'll give you a nice little border too. And you don't have to do this at all. I also have another um, suggestion in my pattern and in the green, the green sponge I have pictured that is um, actually with kind of an alternate alternate um, option where I worked in between two of these rows, okay, because we have these two rows combine our two and three, and then I worked two rows of single crochets, so I ended up in the right spot to restart my row two and three. I did two rows of single crochets, making sure I had the 20 count, and then I worked another set of the rows two and three, and then two rows of the single crochets, and then rows two and three, um, two sets of those. So there are some other things you can do to kind of jazz up your project, do something a little different. Um, but however you however you decide to go with it is it's fine either way. I ended with my yellow being a little bigger than my green, so it's going to be a little bigger. You're going to find though that you can do some things and it's not going to really affect a whole lot on the outcome of your project. Just make sure you match up your wrong side to your wrong side when you're stitching your two together. And if you're just creating one hole and um, folding it in half, even better, even better. And you're just going to go around. I would say you just go into each, make sure that you're going through. I'm going to chain one here and I'm going to work a corner, a couple corner stitches here first. One, two, to keep it squared off. And then you want to make sure that you get into both of your front. I'm coming right out of here. And hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Both of your front into the two green, the two on the other side. And you come through. And you can work either a single crochet or you can work a slip stitch. It's really up to you. Um, the slip stitch is nice because just to me it just kind of locks everything in. Um, but I'm going to, I just started that with a single crochet, so I think I just determined what I'm doing. So I'm just going to work a single crochet around each of the stitches, making sure to go in all of the stitches all the way through. And just do that all the way around. Now on the sides, you know that your stitches are not like actual stitches going down. So you really just want to kind of determine to the best of your abilities where you're going to go in for your stitches. Okay, because you do have some stitches in there and you just kind of work your stuff down there too to make it all work out and nice and even. So I'll be back to show you the finished product. Okay, I thought I'd just go ahead and come back live so that you guys could see the um, <laughs> extremely big sponge that I made. And it is much bigger than my other sponge, so it's going to be a little more uh, bulky. But I've got my green and i got my yellow. And I did add one more row of the yellow here that maybe I shouldn't have made it a little bigger than I needed it to be but so here's my new sponge and um, again I hope that this has been a helpful video to you guys um, for the kind of sponge one more time um, to let you know the sponge that I made in the video remember um, there is an alternative method to making that which what you're going to do is you're going to work rows one two and three 
and then you'll repeat rows two and three and then um, after you've completed row three you will work two rows of single crochets and then you will chain two after those two rows of single crochets and you will work another two sets of rows two and three and you'll work another row of two or another two rows of single crochets you'll do that for however large you want you would like your sponge to be if you want a big sponge like this or a regular sponge um, yeah that's a little bigger so <laughs> this is closer to the other size of my sponge which is really nice and it holds well so um, anyhow you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for joining me and so much for the love on my pattern. I am so happy to see so many people are liking the pattern. So you have a great day. Thanks.